My first question, probably, Nicole, is how big's your mantelpiece? <laughs> oh my gosh, bless you. Um, this is so crazy. Well, Lawrence Olivier Award. This is. Um, it's beautiful. It's a really proud moment, you know. I feel like I've come home at last. Well, hello there. My name is Tom Hayden Millwood, and yes, folks, what's on stage is back here at the Royal Albert Hall for one of the biggest nights of the theatrical calendar. It's the 2024 Olivier Awards. Without any further ado, let's hear from the winners. I would say one of the funniest ones was probably um, when I was walking down the Strand, forgot all of my lines and just started scatting, because I thought that that was probably the best way to cover up the fact that I'd forgot my words. So Sunset Boulevard became bum ba da um, And yeah, that, that one saved somewhere um, <laughs> for the archive. Well, yes, yes, it, it's, it's, it, it, it is a tough job. She really does turn up every night and so um yeah if you don't she does eat you alive but i like the challenge i mean to have the evening standard award the what's on stage award and now the olivier award um it just is confirmation that we're doing the work that we're supposed to do it's just <laughs> affirmation and confirmation that we're doing the right work the purposeful work the work that makes a difference the work that's meaningful the work that's purposeful and people are connecting and I'm so grateful that I have this opportunity to connect with people on the rawest, realest form of human level. I've counted a few times how many characters I'm playing, but then every time the show kind of mutates or changes, I might lose one, I might gain one. So I don't know what the current tally is. Um, I, I know it's in the 20s, possibly early 30s. Um, you know, that's including waiters and butlers and barmen and all the other things. Um, so yeah, I play so many different characters, which is a joy because I've always loved multi-role. I've always considered it one of my strengths, so it's good to flex those muscles and show off. Really, really, people say, oh, how do you do it? I say, because it's just so, so fun. And just, it's show-offy and really, really easy. I mean, I remember the first time we, um, the, well, the first night, actually, the first preview, the final number and getting the audience reaction felt really, really special. There have been so many moments backstage um, and the little moments, like we had so many big moments like recording the album and everything. Also just having lunch with my friends on the balcony of Soho Place. They're the memories, like sharing riddles and deciding who is what dinosaur. Um, they're the memories that are probably going to stay in my heart for the longest. The little big moments. The little big moments. Shooting some of the pre-record. Um, I've got a young daughter and so um, when we started shooting she was six months old and, and so we rehearsed in Melbourne rather than rehearsing in London, we could be home for that. And um, rehearsing in Melbourne, shooting a very uh, woodland London, no, British woods scene meant to be cold, meant to be freezing. It was 35 degrees Celsius. I was wearing a fat suit and an overcoat and another coat and a wig cap and a wig and a beard. And I was sweating and then having to go pump in the forest because my daughter was breastfeeding. And that is quite a poignant moment. And I see that every night now on the stage. I can see that moment and go, if you can do that then, you can do this now. I, I absolutely didn't expect it, so I was totally surprised. And even there was a, my, my um, program was, was at my feet and I thought, I'm not going to bother kicking it out of the way because I'm going nowhere. So it, I'm really chuffed to bits. But I was saying, I think uh, the irony of this being my greatest rival is not lost on me. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I'm going to go home and put uh, Gilgood's face over the top of it. <laughs> uh, I mean, Harry, I mean, I am delighted to um, collect this. I feel like Semi on your behalf. I mean, he is such an icon, such a hero. I have so much respect and uh, love for him as a yeah, as a football, footballer, but also as a humble, modest role model who is a consummate professional who challenges himself every week to be better and to work harder and to get himself to the highest level he possibly can. And that work ethic is inspirational, whatever your discipline. So uh, yeah, thank you, Harry. I just want I wanted it to be very different to the traditional 
guys and dolls that everybody knows. I wanted it to be edgy, fearless, real. So the characters that enter, the crap shooters, never go from being crap shooters to dancers. You barely recognize their dancers because everything they do is so real and strong. And it was exciting, wasn't it? It was, it was incredibly exciting to create, thinking, you know, I mean, also a logistical nightmare trying to figure out all the lifting platforms. But, you know, what a joy as well to, to have that challenge and to be able to give audiences a chance to be so close to the action. You know, that's what's so special about this show. People can literally feel the sweat coming off the performers, which you don't get in a proscenium theatre. I was so overwhelmed and moved. I was just like, started crying because um, I didn't expect that. I just first discovered the score when it was, um, when, it, when the show was first written in the early 90s and it stayed with me. It was it had such a big impact on me back then. So to be able to conduct it now in this new um, production and bring it to a whole new audience has meant a great deal. I suppose the strange thing was we, the, the main protagonist was a monster. So um, we had to, and actually that they are, um, you know, very real locations and then there are quite untangible new locations like the Red Void. Um, so, you know, just creating that and finding a, finding a, a way, also finding the, uh, uh, keeping the fluidity to go from one to uh, the next um, was quite difficult. Well, that is, that's been fundamental to this whole process. We, we're trying not to let anyone see where those gaps lie. We don't want people to think, oh, that was an interesting bit of video, that's a lovely bit of set. It's just... I, I'm seeing something that I don't quite understand unfold in front of my eyes and I don't care how they're making it, it's just speaking to me. It's phenomenal, the show is so exposing of everything, everything is bare bones out there and the work the lighting department did was just phenomenal. Any tiny little error, they were on edge the whole time, the amount of pressure that we put on them and they delivered impeccably every single show. The moment where Jamie decided that, that to make the production what it was, was to send someone down the strand and back into the auditorium, fill me with dread and fear but we managed to do it and, and it's incredible. It still scares the hell out of me every night. The adrenaline is still pumping, it's still rushing. Like, I feel like I'm gonna wake up and this is all a dream because I have very vivid dreams. So I'm like, please don't wake up. <laughs> like, but yeah, sleepover being programme was a dream come true. I absolutely love the bush as a writer. It's a, they have such stages that, become, that can become anything. And to have a play on there that then did so well uh, it was every writer's dream, really, and the bush is such a home for writers and new writing. I'm having an out of body experience right now. Uh, I'm just, it's really scary to come from American TV into British theater. They're totally different worlds, it's totally different desires, and I came at it like I come at everything, which is blindly and aggressively. And um, I was surrounded by so much support. Like I'm just a cog in this giant, wonderful machine, and I am. I am the I'm the smallest cog. And um, and but no, to be celebrated and feel like this is you know accepted and um, you know enjoyed. Like I I didn't see it coming. Honestly, I didn't. I thought that I thought the British were gonna be mean. Oh. I know, but they're not. No, that's they're not. the headline. British no, they, are not me. No, they appreciate great art, and this is this is art that this is art meeting commerce in the in the most extraordinary way. I have nothing but wonderful memories. Yeah, yeah. It was just incredibly, genuinely a collaborative um, effort. So uh, you could only see me on the stage, but there there. Were, there was some, Sam came to the show every single night, which is an unusual uh, thing for a director to do, and he was just um, amazing, along with Simon, and Rosie, and just incredible. The stage management team were just yeah. my big, my, my big pals for the whole show because I didn't have any other people to have a gag with. So yeah, it was amazing, and this is amazing. I mean, I knew the Pussycat Dolls a little bit. But I had no idea Nicole could sing like this. Well, we worked on it before. We worked on it right away when it went with Jamie because he wanted to uh, sort of lift it into a new century because we, it was 30 years ago we wrote it. And so he had some very clear ideas about it. And I think right away didn't, we said to each other, this boy looks yeah, as if no. he's going to do very well. Yeah. I love World Cup football and I love the England football team. And I'm so grateful. The one person I forgot to thank on stage was Gareth Southgate, who actually was so generous in his time 
to let me go up, speak to people, ask awkward questions, spend time at St George's Park. All the while being really honest to me that he couldn't think of anything worse than a famous actor playing him and that he was never going to come and see the show. And that is still the case, but one day I'm really hoping that um, he trusts us enough to come and, come and see it. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously, like, and it's, it probably goes without saying that obviously the great mission of this was to get non-traditional theatre audiences to come and see a play and, um, and the National Theatre uh, uh, and Cameron McIntosh at The Prince Edward, they were so committed to getting thousands and thousands of kids who'd never seen a play before. And we know that was, that was the case, like thousands of kids who'd never seen a play have come and seen this. And I'm really grateful for that. And obviously the question now is how you build on that and, and, and other people are doing it as well. And, and, but it's the most important thing we should be doing at the moment. I mean, with, with the number of fans we have in the show, then uh, I can see why you might say that the fan approval was a given, but to have the actual recogni recognition from the industry, the, the, the biggest awards for our show, which started on the fringe and has grown up across seven years to get here and for them to say yes this is this is the best that we are making in this country right now is such a huge honor frankly having, having said all that without the fans that we would not be here yeah. like yeah. The, the, the people who came to see the show grew it got it from venue Absolutely. to venue to venue so we will be industry forever, wouldn't have come without them ever yeah. grateful yeah. first and foremost to those people who took a chance on this musical when we were when we had no well, fans out there at all so we, we will be in our debt forever. Thank Shout you. out to the Minsfluencers. Thank yes. you so much. we love, love you. <laughs> so that about wraps it up for the Olivier Awards. Leave your comments in the section below about the 2024 ceremony. Please keep it kind. And if you're a fan of the theatre, then give us a like and why not subscribe to the channel and ring the bell for notifications. And I'll see you next time for What's On Stage. No, for football and theatre, it'll never work, will it? No, what a mad idea. That's so stupid. <laughs> Did we? Yes! Oh, oh, I see them then. Oh. <laughs> potentially, potentially. <laughs> Sorry, I'm late. Sorry, I'm late. Congratulations to you. Thank you very much. Thank Have you got a, a special memory, perhaps, from your time in Vanya? Don't remember any of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a lot now, so we're doing it again. <laughs> yeah. And which Netflix series are you going to tackle next, Sonia? <laughs> Sonia, what are we doing next? What are you Anything, doing next? Anything, to be honest. I promise you, you'll get the exclusive. <laughs> <laughs>